Hello and welcome to a special video. So anybody that's um, been with the channel a while now will know that generally I put three videos out a week and I've already exceeded that this week because I had um, put in that um, that video to do with the release of or the upcoming release of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. I got it right that time. I think I kept calling it Neon Destiny for some reason on, on the video I did, but Neon Dynasty. Um, and I thought because a particular book I have in front of the camera here had arrived, people would be interested in, in this book. And I thought I'd, I'd do it now um, rather than try and sit on it a bit longer. So what, what had happened was uh, I had done that unboxing video for the Hermetic Tarot deck and I noticed how um, the level of interest, uh, relatively, relatively speaking, w was high for that particular unboxing. And it also had piqued my interest in the um, artwork that has been um, presented through the framework of, of tarot over the years. So what had happened was I went online and specifically was looking for books that look at that, look at the tarot through the lens of the artwork. And sure enough, I found a, a Tashin book. Um, it was very reasonable uh, as anybody that buys these heavy um, coffee table Tashin books will know they're excellent value for money. Um, I think it was slightly reduced as well. I paid in, in Canada, this is this Canadian dollars. Uh, this was around just under $50, somewhere around $49 on Amazon. And with the 5% tax on top that we have for books in Canada, which is lower than the usual 15% sales tax. Um, yeah, that just pushed it to just over $50. So it was just under, you know, one, two bucks under, and then it just went about a, a buck over. Um, because of that 5% five, um, 5 sales tax. So I was pretty pleased about that. I've, I've obviously some familiarity, familiarity already with, with Tash and it, it's, it's difficult not to, to ignore them if you frequent bookshops as, as much as I have done over the years. Um, I will say, you know, in terms of, I don't have a ton of Tash and books. The ones I've in the past have tended to gravitate round have been ones for specific auth, um, specific artists. So I've got one here for Hieronymus Bosch, and many of you will be familiar with this sort of size of of Taschen book as well. You often see a lot of these in art galleries. Um, but it was nice to see them doing a full coffee tail treatment for the tarot artwork. Um, the other thing that attracted me to this book, I have a rather nice um, book about the symbolic interpretation of the uh, Rider weight deck. And you can see it sort of goes through and breaks down the, for the picture, the different symbols in there. And I was pleased to note that one of these authors was actually involved in this. So it'd be interesting to see um, whether there are any aspects of that. I'm, I don't, I'm not particularly after anything that does that because I, I have this book, um, but it will be interesting to see if they've relied on uh, one of the authors here, their expertise in just explaining um, some of the, the art and the symbology. Um, and from what I've seen already, it's not in the same style as, as that book. This is a completely different treatment. So I've been sitting this on this for a couple of days now, um, not specifically for this video, but I wanted to set aside uh, a Friday, so I rescheduled everything, uh, pushed everything that I, that I potentially might have to do on a Friday to earlier in the week, um, so that I'd have a whole day to just enjoy this book and the artwork and whatever text might be in here, but I'm probably more interested in the actual artwork, the imagery. So you can see it's still sealed, I've been very good. Um, I wanted to wait until the Friday until I actually open this. 
so I could just really enjoy it. So what you're going to see here is, is you know, the first time I've looked in, physically inside this book. I've seen um, a few things online because I wanted to get some feel for what was in the book. So, so I mean, I didn't think it would be a dud, but you never know. So let's, um, let's just carefully open this without um, damaging it. It's in pretty good condition. I was rather concerned, as I think most of us are at the moment, ordering stuff from Amazon. Um, you know, they have a habit of um, putting thing in, things in overly large boxes and neglecting to put um, anything in there to really stop it shaking around. I was quite pleased it was still in the this sort of publisher's shrink wrap seal, which is good. I'm going to screw that. I'll keep that little on the back there. I didn't show you that. It's just a little, you know, publisher blurb there, which it says the 600-year-old tradition of the tarot reflects a colourful and diverse history of esoteric expression. This extensive visual compendium features imaginative works ranging from early Renaissance decks to contemporary cards created by artists like Nicky de saint Far, I think that is Farle, and Salvador Dali. Tarot marks the first in the Library of Esoterica series, with each volume showcasing mystical concepts and practices as translated into enduring and visionary works of art. In terms of that series, um, I believe either there's three books out or there's two books out and one is pending. So let's have a look here. Oh this here, just if you're curious and you haven't seen any videos about this, is this is all embossed. Okay, so what have we got here? Looks like we've got four main sections. Um, stepping into oblivion. Lovely. <laughs> Magic and man manifestations. Uh, visionary exploration. And speaking in symbols. So, how oh, I can see here, so we've got the Major Arcana there and then they go through the Minor Arcana as well. Okay. This video by the way is not a video about the tarot. I'm not going to try and explain the history at all in this video. I just want to have a quick look at the sections and what's mainly in them. So I'm assuming this is specifically about yeah personal archetypes and self development well so it starts off with the history of the tarot we have thoth Yeah, the rosy cross blue. Well, this is going to be very interesting. So there is quite a bit of text in here. Oh, here we go. So there's this is the bit about early decks. Okay, so yeah, I recognise that. <laughs> okay. Now, what I wanted to get. Oh, so we got a we got our history here, starting off, going through. Okay, so we have got a timeline going on here as well. Okay, so that's the first book. I'm sort of putting it, I suppose, in a historical context. Oh, here we go, the major arcana. So this is a section I was particularly interested in because I'm hoping it's going to have multiple pieces of art. Oh, oh, yeah, I see what they've done here. Yeah, this is good. So this is exactly what I was hoping they would do. Oh, and there is a Rider Waite tarot. Now there was a bit here, someone had pointed out in another video, and I'm curious about this, where they... One of the description sections, let me go back to the full. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I'm going to learn more about this as I go, as, go through and check this. Yeah, so this bit here, and I, I, when I read the book, it might explain where these come from. These look suspiciously like descriptions um, of the artwork in the Rider Weight deck, and quite possibly um, tarot decks artwork that the Rider Weight was inspired from. Um, so that's the thing. So when you're reading this, you have to be really careful because you won't always see what they're talking about in here. But what you should do is return to here. So we've got the appearance of our doggo friend on a number of these. So yeah, here we have the, the rider white. Oh, this is wonderful. So I'm going to really enjoy it today. The magician. Symbology. There's a quote by Arthur Edward White. I'm not going to go through all of this, but I just wanted to give you some idea of just how extensively or how many pieces of artwork that they do actually have. And it looks like the interesting thing with as well here is they are switching out artworks. So it's not always the same decks under each of the, the cards. And that's really cool. I, there's one thing I do like about a lot of Tash and stuff, how they mix up the layouts of the formatting, it's not always, you know, exactly the same. This is incredible. Okay, so let's just move on. Um, like I said, I don't know, but you can you can get a feel for the ones I've looked at there. And we are still in part two, so it's rather helpfully. You can see up here. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Okay, it might be just out of focus um at the screen yeah part two we're still on so you can see they've really done a very extensive coverage of the major arcana and i can sort of see why they do that because if you look historically across all of um all the tarot decks you know there are some early tarot decks which don't necessarily have uh that you know the minor arcana don't necessarily have any uh, meaningful symbology on, on them beyond the number of the particular staves or swords or pentacles or uh, or cups sun judgment the world uh, so that's how they've dealt with this so what they what they've done now is they've given a sort of broad overview so we are still this is still all part of part two and i'm just trying to find where that starts so we've got the world there we go ones the smell off of this book is incredible it's, it's got that wonderful you know there's a there's a nice new book smell and then there's a horrible one um, and I think anybody that's opened a lot of books will know exactly what I mean. You know, sometimes with those cheap books, you get that nasty, noxious ink smell. Um, it smells a little bit fishy. <laughs> this isn't like that. This just smells awesome. <laughs> if, you're, if you're into sniffing books. So yeah, it goes through the different suits. And shows you some of the different artwork. Yeah, I wondered if they were going to do that actually, where they might show for a particular, like the ace. Um, they might sort of focus on that over everything else. Let me get on to wands. And then 
cups. So they're not going through each of those um, minor arcana individually, but they're giving a general overview of the of the particular um, suit. But down here you can see it's got individual interpretations and that's going to work really well with this is going to work nice actually with the, um, the book I showed you earlier this one here I think that'll be good because that does go through all of the individual um, cards of the different suits as well so this is this is one of these nice books where you know I'll have this book open and probably something else um, you know, look, just cross-referencing some of the symbology. Wow, this is incredible. Oh, look, it's, um, <laughs> for some reason that, that face just reminds me of the Hungry Ghost. Um, I'm trying to remember what that film is now. It's gone, it'll come back to me. Spirited away. We're on to pentacles. Of course, the problem with a book like this is if you if you sort of appreciate the artwork, it does make you want to go out and <clears throat> track down some of these decks. <laughs> and then we've got visionary exploration. So, oh, here we go. Cool. I was hoping they'd have a little bit about. Um, Pamela Coleman Smith. So she's the artist um, for the Rider White deck. Artists, creators, and mystics. So it looks like these are like personal profiles of, or very sheer, a little bit about the people involved. So I'm sure that they also get a, a reference in that first section about history, but it looks like it goes into a bit more about individual contributors. We've got some some large form artwork here as well, and then around the other way, um, modern art inspired by the tarot. So where the tarot has inspired other art, you know, artists. That would be an interesting thing. I wonder if there's been any. Are those those aren't stamps, are they? I don't think so. No. Be interesting to see if any, if any of these uh, images have ever been reproduced on stamps. If anybody watching this video knows that, can can you let me know? Because that's another interesting, you know, area. Not that maybe that would be a thing that necessarily the country would do, but um, imagine there might have been some Italian um, tarot because. Um, was it, I'm trying to think, is it France or Italy? They still actually you play a game of tarot as, as, as a game. Speaking in symbols, so the cards as tools. Okay, so this talks about various uses of the cards. Not very, not very big section on that really because they're obviously leaving that up to other authors because this is mainly about the artwork, the artists and the the symbology side of of this and if you know anything about the history of the tarot you'll know that you know a lot of the early cards again going back to the, the suits rather than the so the minor arcana didn't have necessarily symbology in them featuring in the artwork um, beyond the, the number of items like the number of staves or the number of um, cups yeah i am going to really enjoy this so I think I'm going to um, stop this, this video now. I don't have much more to say because I just want to sit down and go through this book. So yeah, um, thanks for checking this out. Hopefully that's been a really good uh, idea of if you if you have what, seen this book um, in terms of, of what you're getting into. In terms of, I, I don't have many um, sort of unopened decks that I'll be talking about on camera apart from one 
Um, I might go back through my collection at some point. My collection is very, very modest of tarot cards um, and do, you know, an on-camera thing, maybe go through the artwork. But um, interesting enough, at the same time I bought that Hermetic Trout Tarot, um, <coughs> I was in Toronto. I, I was at the, the art gallery. This came from the, you know, the AGO. Um, and found this. I believe this has now been uh, discontinued. It's no longer in print um, and it's still in its, its wrapper. I just never got around to opening it. So at some point I'll definitely be opening this and maybe it'd be interesting with this one because the artwork is so different maybe to do a side-by-side side, side by side comparison with um, something like the Rider Waite or something like that. Anyway that's something for the future. I'm not saying it's going to come out in the next couple of weeks but something to look forward to. Thanks once again for checking this video out and bye for now.